Steve Hackett looks at an album that is turning 50 this year, Foxtrot by Genesis, released in 1972. We already talked about Supper's Ready in another video. We'll put links to that in the description of this one. He talks about other songs he was involved in with Foxtrot. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Now remember on this channel, as you know, we clip interviews into different pieces. But guess what? We have another channel where we feature the entire interview. So if you want to see the entire thing, this eighth interview with Steve Hackett, there'll be a link in the description of this video where you can uh, you can check it out. What was the, uh, uh, the, the pro I'm just doing a few tracks from uh, Foxtrot, Apocalypse in 9-8. What, yes. what was what was your part in that? Uh, basically, Apocalypse in Nine Eight. Um, there was a, a riff that, that um, and so many of these things, the one note riff, the one note bass pedal riff in Nine that um, uh, Mike Rutherford had. Um, basically, Mike and I played that. We stayed as solid as we could. Um, Tony improvised around it. We used to play this endlessly in, in, in rehearsal, or so it seemed. And whilst Tony was um, cycling his part. So um, uh, my, my part was just to be there for that, you know, and, and to set it, set it in motion. Uh, there were other parts that I was writing that were more of the stream, which were more creative from, from my end. But um, uh, it's a keyboard solo in nine. Um, it ascends, it keeps going, it develops, but then it turns into something else because Peter Gabriel, who I think had a had a unique sense of, of creativity, turned it into something rather extraordinary with um, references to the Book of Revelation and Pythagoras and um, various other things where I think, what is he seeing it about? It certainly isn't boy girl isn't you know it's not that get him out by friday uh yes. what about that what about that one um interesting tune um written entirely in the rehearsal room to order uh, pete had a lyrical idea which was um the idea it, social comment where um um he'd read a story about two old ladies who'd lost their house because um of unscrupulous um, estate agents who managed to pull a fast one on them. And um, so I think Pete always had the humanitarian um, touch going for him. Um, and um, it's a song, I think we all contributed sections um, to it. And um, at the time I, I used to sort of pass it by, but it's got some very beautiful moments. Funnily enough, when we were recording that, Donovan wandered into the studio. And um, uh, just as we were doing the, the moment where you've got the Mellotron flutes and the real flute, the um, um, the kind of, um, what I think of as the waltz section. And, um, and that, that was interesting talking to him, you know, about what he was up to at the time. and. Um, because I'd spend a lot of time listening to um, to his stuff, and um, I think you know many of those early albums of his were were extremely creative and um, very very good. Um, and it again, it, he seemed to to um, develop in that very nineteen sixties sort of way, where at first an artist appears much like the Beatles, who seems to be you know based in folk, but then using that platform to, to branch out. So the evolution that accompanied the Beatles' work and, and his, uh, because I, I find that interesting. You know, he seemed to be fluent in, in, um, in, a, in a jazz vein, um, Sunny Good Street, and um, one of the tracks of Sunshine Superman, funny enough. Um, really very, in, very, very interesting. You get the feeling that you know, this guy was was doing that, and then some years down the line, Sting might take something that that was that was similar. There was there was an appreciation of of jazz, so I, I I liked him doing that, and I and I thought, you know, this is this is this is good. You know, 
he's open to those influences, broadening music. Uh, so, so many people I've listened to, you know, some of them are very, very hip. Some of them, you know, um, it's it's a different story, and and it, and it's it's easy to say this is new music, this is old music, but actually, you know, what touches you at, at the time, there are certain things that are classic. The Everly Brothers are classic. Um, songs that sound sweeter with, with the passing of time uh, engage me quite a bit. You were a big part in uh, Can Utility and the Coastliners. Is it King Canute? King Canute, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was... Um, um, it was based on the story of, of, of King Canute, and um, I, I think it's got some great sections in it. I, I basically did the song part, and um, I wrote the lyrics. Um, and I was quite proud of the fact that um, I know Tony, Tony Banks at the time said he, he thought that, you know, I'd written it in a very Genesis style, although I was a new boy in Genesis, you know. That it was it was very Genesis the whole thing so hey fine and I think um, as well as him complimenting me uh, I do believe the the Mellotron solo that he does which is um, extremely orchestral is wonderful because you've got improvised drums you've got the tolling bell of the of the um, uh, of the bass pedal and um, something that sounds like an orchestral part beautifully written over just a couple of unchanging chords. Um, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's one of our best numbers. And I tell you what, um, I'll be doing the whole of that when I do uh, Foxtrot at the end of the year. First of all, it's seconds out. In some places we're doing Selling England by the Pound because we didn't get to complete the entire British tour, last uh, American tour uh, last time. Um, I can't remember whether we managed to complete all the Canadian dates or not, but in some places. So we try to honour it because those three albums. There is some crossover, of course, um, but I've got to, I've got to get um, uh, more songs committed to memory um, when you're suddenly switching from one set to another. Do we have time to talk about Horizons? Yeah, sure. Uh, did you come up with that in the studio? Were you ready when you came in? Was it? How did that come up? I played it to the band uh, um, at one point and I fully expected them to say, um, no, I, I can't see how we can do that. You know, that's a solo thing. You know, we, we are a band. And um, I think it was Phil Collins who said, um, when I first played it, he said, it sounds like there ought to be applause after that. So it got the sanction at that, at that stage. Um, I think I played it to them on an electric guitar. What was I thinking? So it was originally recorded on, um, Acoustic steel. I didn't own a steel at the time. I borrowed a friend's Yamaha, and I played it on that. Uh, uh, in more recent years, I've tended to play it on, on on nylon because you need a wider fingerboard, ideally, to play that kind of stuff. Um, but I've recorded it numerous times, and I've played it live a whole ton of times. Um, uh, you know, we. We credited it to the entire band, but that's only because we were a kind of songwriters collective. So um, uh, it kind of works as a as um, an introduction to Supper's Ready, the bigger track. The bigger meal is is Supper's Ready, whereas that is is the um, that's the kind of um, it's the order of the volavons that that, that precede the uh, the gathering that is. Uh, supper's ready. Yeah. We'll have more from Steve Hackett in the next two, three days. Keep in mind, if you want to see the entire interview, it's on our sister channel, Rock History Book. There'll be links in the description of this video. Also links to the top Genesis albums, a feature we did a few years ago, and the top 25 Genesis songs, another feature we did maybe four or five years ago. We put a lot of production into it, so check it out. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music.